we've got Mike from Ohio. Uh, hey there, uh, Mike. You are on with uh, Brian and Richard. How you doing? Hi, tonight? Mike. Hey, I'm doing good, fellas. How you doing? I'm really good, thank you. Good. All right. And uh, you have a, uh, no. a claim for us? I, I I'm driving in this truck right now, so I have to speak up a little bit. Okay, I'm 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 sorry. Can you hear me better now? So it says yes, to hear that you wanted to uh, talk about a journey from atheism to Christianity. Um, you talked to Ethan before, is that right? Yes, I did. Did you have a different topic in mind tonight? Well, he messaged me and asked me if I wanted to call into the show, and I thought that he had a question for me, or he wanted to follow up with our conversation, or, you know, I I just called in. Just uh, I'm interested you in your story. Uh, I'm I just kind of, yeah, I'm just listening to the show. It's kind of... All over the place tonight, really. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got a lot of different points of view. Uh, so you you are a uh, a Christian, uh, and you used to be an atheist. Yes. Uh, did something yes. uh, some kind of event in your life occur? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm making you rehash stuff you you told all before, but new 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 host here, so we 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 are interested in, in listening to what you have to say. Um, so just to kind of go back. You know, I was like complete atheist. I had no belief whatsoever. And um, somebody invited me to church, and he kept bothering me. And I decided to go just to get him off my back. And I sat in the very back of the church. Um, and at the end of the service, I, all I could think about was leaving and, you know, just going and living my life and doing what I did. And... I was standing there at the altar, and I, to this day, you know, that was in 1998. Um, I don't know how I got to the altar, other than when the Lord spoke to me the first time I heard the voice inside my heart. He said that I was too stupid to go to the altar by myself, that he had to carry me there, and he had to show me that he was real. And it was that moment in my life that I was never able to, from that moment in April of 1998 to this present day to say that there is no God um, and to say that Jesus Christ isn't who he says he is because that's who I kind of came face to face with that night. Um, and my whole life, the whole direction of my life changed after that okay. moment. Uh, I haven't well, been the I, same since, you know, can I, I guess some clarification. Can I get some clarification on the terms there? Uh, you said spoke to your to your heart. Uh, could, could you describe that experience? So a lot of people ask if it's like an audible voice or if it's something that you hear on the inside that you all you can say is yeah, I heard of, I heard it on the inside. I heard him speak to my my heart, my spirit. And that's where God always speaks to me is inside my spirit. Um Tonight, you know, just driving in the truck and just through prayer, um, you know, I, I, I have some friends that are going through some really hard times and I've just been in prayer for them. And, you know, I, I just I hear the Lord's voice, you know, you know, oh, okay. uh, uh, giving so, me words to say. Um, so, uh, go ahead. Mike, well, it's uh, let's say it's it's uh, Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Uh, do you like Star Wars? Uh, sort of. I don't know much. Of, I mean, I've watched it, but okay. I'm not like a. a Star, how, how, I just want to know how you know that anything. that wasn't the force touching your heart. Uh, what what methodology would we use to discern that it was God and not the force? So, because I I never heard anything speak inside of me, like to speak to my spirit, until I that day, right? So I was, um, I was so 1998. I was 20 years old. I'm 43 now. Um, mm -hmm. And and it's just a it's a personal experience because, you know, I've, I heard people speak about how they've never heard the voice of God, but they have an intuition about God. They 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 know what God wants them to do and they do it, but they don't hear anything. Um, I've also heard people um, in other faiths like Buddhism, you know, where they meditate and through meditation, they come in contact with God in their own way. 
perfect guys right, mate i need to stop you i need to i need to stop you here i've been practicing buddhist meditation okay. for 20 years i know a lot about meditation and the internal feelings and the internal voices that you get from it so let's go down that route let's let's have a look a compare okay. and a contrast and see if what you're experiencing is what is actually experienced in buddhist meditation so i've i've had feelings i've had uh great feelings of peace of warmth of love not through any god figure but because that's any that's i'm settled down i'm settled into a calm state of mind i'm in a peaceful state of mind i'm internalizing things i'm asking internal questions i i hear a, an inward voice but it's not from any kind of like external thing coming inwards it's it's an internal conversation you have with yourself uh, I'm interested, I'm very, very interested in this initial feeling that you had when you first went to the church and you got to the altar. I'm really, really interested in this experience. What kind of church was it, if you don't mind me asking? Was it, uh, was, was it a song and dance church? Was it a quiet, reflective church? What was the kind of experience in the church before the experience you had? Okay, so prior to that experience, all I was in was dead churches where I experienced nothing. And then this was a Pentecostal church where people were singing loud and praising God. And, you know, like the people were kind of like more into the move of God than just sitting in a pew and hearing somebody talk about God. Are you and Pentecostal now? So no, I'm, or, I'm not. I, I, okay. I went to Pentecostal Bible College, too, and I kind of just, I kind of stay away from it now. Not that I don't believe in it, but there's too many weirdos in there, you know? And I'm not a weirdo. I don't want to be a weirdo. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. That's what gives well, Christianity I, a stigma, you know, is the weird is the weirdness about it. And, the, and we're the all weird, dude. Do to, <laughs> I'm sitting here with bugs. Well, and but, the things that people do, but, but, but what people do to try to get God's attention you know, yeah. like, I, I don't have to go anywhere and be in front of anybody to get God's attention. I could be in a truck alone all day, and God's with me. I don't have to be there to do that. And, you know, and how people just, like, you know, they, 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 they have these, like, revival services and, you know, and fire and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, why don't you just go to your prayer closet, man? And just how, how are you, how are you, you know? differentiating, Mike, between the, the internal voice, which could be a, an internal dialogue with yourself and a, an outward supernatural voice coming into you? What, what, pro, what is the distinction you're making between the two? How do you know it's God and not just an internal dialogue? Well, because when God speaks, it's, it's either something that I need an answer for that only he can give me. And then when it's something like outside of me, you know, I mean, I guess I've heard outside voices and I've heard things that have harmed me, you know, calling it God and it isn't God. I've done that before. And that's part of the reason why, too, I kind of would prefer to be quiet um, when I seek God more than just and a crowd of people yelling to God um, because we know when you got too many voices around you, it's kind of hard to know which one's God or not because everybody wants what they hear to be God. And I don't care if what I hear, if anybody else believes it or not, you know, it's between me and God. And that's how I know it's internal. It's him because it doesn't matter what anybody else says to me. It's for me, but, you know, no, and I'm, I'm not talking about that and I think it's so Mike. I'm, I'm not I'm not asking you about external voices. I'm asking you about inward dialogue. Uh, how do you how do you differentiate the between dialogue. your own inward yeah, dialogue? Yeah, because I feel like I have my dad's voice in my head when I'm like looking under the hood of my car. I have my dad's voice in my head telling me to do this and check that. Uh, how do you know it's not a uh, something that that you're engaging with inside your mind uh, to kind of instruct you yeah, on how to? Okay, because my my thoughts. And God's voice are two different things. And my inner voice and God's voice are not the same thing. What I tell myself daily and what God speaks to me are not the same thing. It's different. It, it has a different tone to it. Um, there's, there's a softness with God's voice. There's a, a calmness with God's voice. There's a, 
a, a sh- assurance too, where I doubt myself a lot. Um, you know, I, I, because I get the I same thing from the, from the, my dad's knowing. voice though, that I, that I was talking about. So it's not my voice and these aren't my messages. My dad wants me to do things to my car that I don't have any interest in doing at all, but it does take care of the car. So change the oil or whatever you need to change your oil. You put this many miles on it. Oh, come on, dad. I don't feel like doing it. And then I have to go do it, but that's not something I want to do. It's not my own voice instructing me to do it. It's, it's this construct of my father in my head who taught me how to take care of a vehicle. You get what I'm saying though? Why we're asking about how do you. Yeah. You've heard your dad's voice your whole life. So of course you're going to hear your dad's voice in your head. You've put it there. You, you know what it sounds like and you know what he says to you. So things will pop up in your head through your own conscience because it's because you've heard it your whole life. Like my mom's voice, you know, and my grandpa, but you know, my grandpa would say things to me and, and today, you know, my grandpa's been dead since 2008. And the things he said to me that I didn't listen to when I was a kid, I, I listened to it now because what he was saying to me was something I needed to hear and I didn't want to hear it then. But he okay, still Mike, said it and those words still got from, in my head. Yeah. Mike, we've got, got a question from your friend chat. What does life look like if God's not really with you, but you just think he is? That's a question from Blaine. Ten dollars. He wants to he wants to know there, Mike. <laughs> so so the difference is between if I think God is with me and if God is really with me. So I've been there too. Right? I my my Christianity is 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 nothing but step to step to step to step. You know, you know. I, I have always had this thing in me where I wanted God to be a certain thing. We all want that. But then who is God for real? And when God shows me who he really is, well, that's not me. I, I have nothing to do with that. I just obey it. I just surrender to, to him because what? he's God and I'm not. Has he ever said anything to uh, the, My own you, voices. Mike, has he ever said anything... Uh, yeah to you that which you don't agree with has he ever said anything which has kind of pushed you into thinking well i don't this is not me i don't agree with this but it's coming from god so i should really go in that direction like abraham moment okay yeah. so there's yeah yes yeah. go ahead no that's there's, what i was, I was a just lot about scripture yeah, I was Sorry, just clarifying that, yeah, like uh, like an Abraham moment where, you know, God's telling you to do something that you really don't want to do, but you know you need to do it because God's telling you to do it. Have you ever had a moment like that? Yes. So I just say something simple as moving back to my hometown. That was so simple. I, I have felt it in my spirit for five years to be back home and to help in the recovery scene because I'm, I'm in recovery too. I, I was an alcoholic and a drug addict through my teenage years and then I got saved and then I went to rehab and, and I moved to Mississippi and found God or whatever. And I, I know how to stay sober. And so the Lord, you know, like, like um, Jonah, you know, in Nineveh where he was in the belly of the whale because he, God kept telling him to go to Nineveh and he kept going to all these other towns. And so God had to put him in the belly of the whale and spit him out into Nineveh. So he would go speak to Nineveh because he was like, no one's going to listen to me anyways. Why would I want to go there? They're not going to hear me. And that's kind of what I was like. Like, I, I, I'm like, I don't want to go back there because, you know, who the hell's going to listen to Mike DeMarco, you know? Well, look, pretty, pretty much a lot of people do, you know, because I've been sober for 22 years and I know what I'm talking about. And, and I congratulations on the sobriety, yeah. by the and way. I, yeah, keep up that good work and I, there. And I doubted, and I doubted him like most humans do, like Moses, you know, Moses doubted God all the time. And like all the time he doubted God. God told him to speak. Yeah. And he's like, I need someone else to speak for me. Give me someone else to a, speak, you know, your words. And, and there's and, an overarching you know, God did. God theme. Gave someone else to speak. There's a, there's kind of an overarching theme in the uh, old Testament of, uh, of prophets, uh, not trusting what God's telling them and having, having a bad time, uh, and the Israelites being, uh, kicked around again because uh, the, the the prophets didn't uh, didn't believe what God was telling them to do and it was always it was always some some things like uh, oh go uh, kill these people or or make these kind of uh, offerings or whatever it was yeah it was kind of a, a scary time to be alive back then if you think about it 
know, people say, oh, my God yeah. just said to kill you. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Mike, uh, you, like when it comes to the, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, we're probably going to go ahead and wrap up the call because we got a, a few more waiting and uh, we're running short on time. I'll give you the last word, though. How about that? So what, when I read the Old Testament and I see, like, just the meanness of God, you know, like the hatred of God and that people were who got that from him, you know, and it was like, idolaters or homosexuals or people with gross sexual lifestyles or people who, you know, who lied and stole or, or what, you know, those kind of circumstances. Well, the difference between that and now is we still have all them kinds of people in the earth. We were still humans. We have never changed who we are. And Christ has like made that, you know, where we can all come to him with whatever we have, even if I think that a certain person, you know, is like completely against God. It's really none of my business anymore because of Christ. And it's my job with these people I don't agree with to love them because they're just people where religion, what this is why I kind of have a hard time with what I've been taught, you know, when it, you know, this harsh judgment towards, minorities or towards gays or towards muslims or towards whoever and it's like once i got free from judging them my whole life changed you know having that harshness because christ doesn't have the harshness he didn't show harshness in the new testament he he like did away with all that yeah. you know and i believe the harshness will come at the end if if that's what god sees fit to give us but for now we're I think great that I think and that Christ was. I think that Christ was a little bit harsh in uh, which gospel was it? The one where he uh, he whipped the guys, uh, he flipped over the table. Uh, you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, religious which, people. No, Christ yeah, did that. People. That's who he was the harshest towards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just why, wondering why about was, that. Why was, he, why was he? So ask yourself why was so he? So you just admitted then that you. Mike, you've you've literally just admitted that you're better than Christ because you've said since you've got sober, you've you're you're good with religious p p people of other faiths. You're good with Muslims now. You're good with Jews, and yet you just acknowledge that Christ wasn't. Christ got angry with them and flipped tables over. That tells me you're better than him. Actually, it was because of the type of religious people they were. They were they were hypocrites. They, they, they were, they were, they were nasty people. That's was why the he Pharisees the they were saying they were about him and they were, he said, you don't know my father, you know, my, my house is a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. And he flipped the tables, you know, cause they were yeah. like stealing money. They were there to sell things. Well, I, this is a, a was topic that, I, that I'd really like to, they were, but Sorry, they Mike, I need to cut you off. God, and he says, no, you're not. You know, that's, that's what that was. He's like, you're not the representation of God. Stop. And he flipped the table, you know? Yeah. Why did he show this us is a, so we don't This do is it. a topic uh, that, that, that I'd love to uh, to dig into sometime. So uh, next time I'm on, give me a call back because I want to I talk about this some more okay. with the, the, uh, the, some of the okay. different different versions of the new testament i really like to to dig into that stuff but uh we're gonna bounce on to the uh to the next caller now so uh mike you have a uh a good evening okay yeah thanks for your call mike yeah thank you thank you mm -hmm. yep. before we go to the next call can i just address a stiletto larry i think it is was mm -hmm. uh asking if we're anti-theist i'm not an anti-theist no yeah, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't define myself as an anti-theist either. Uh, I I don't think that all religion is necessarily bad, so I don't. Uh, I, I I don't take that position. So yeah.